These satellite images show some of the most crowded districts in Istanbul, Turkey. And experts are saying that in the event of a major earthquake, such highly populated neighborhoods packed with old buildings and narrow roads will be high risk. What is going on in Istanbul in the last two decades? So construction and construction and more construction without a proper uh, urban planning. So certain neighborhoods in that picture didn't exist 20 years ago. Istanbul is Turkey's largest and most populous city, with over 15 million people. A big stretch of the city sets close to the North Anatolian fault line, making it one of the most seismically active regions in the world. And when 7.8 and 7.6 magnitude earthquakes struck Turkey's southeast and northern Syria, killing more than 50,000 people on the 6th of February 2023, the disaster raised the question of earthquake preparedness in Istanbul. The moment I heard there was an earthquake in Turkey, I knew it was going to be not just an earthquake, but a disaster. Um, and that's because the human setting in Turkey is so vulnerable to earthquakes. There's a huge amount of construction in the area that is just not ready for ground shaking, even though we know it's a seismically active area. Some of it is people's fault and some of it is not. But much of the new construction is also not ready for earthquakes, despite what we know and despite modern building codes. Um, and that that's, I believe, in part because people have flouted building codes. They haven't used proper techniques. And in part because the government has allowed people to build in ways that don't adapt to modern building codes. Footage of the buildings collapsing like pancakes became symbols, showing what went wrong during the earthquakes. Many experts say it's not only the magnitude of the earthquake that caused this unprecedented scale of devastation in modern Turkey, but it was also the poor building structures and lack of preparedness that exacerbated it. Now, Istanbul residents fear that an earthquake of a similar magnitude can cause even bigger damage and loss of life, considering how the city was built and its high density population. There are uh, overall there are about 1 million and 160,000 uh, residential buildings in Istanbul. And out of them, 820,000 buildings were constructed before the 1999 Marmara earthquake when there was no construction inspection regarding resistance to earthquakes. So old buildings that were not constructed according to earthquake regulations corresponds about 70% of all buildings in Istanbul. The need for Istanbul to be prepared for earthquakes has been a talking point of different governments in the past decades. But the recent earthquake raised doubts about how much has been done to save lives and minimize damage in case of such a natural disaster. And the focus is not only on the earthquake, but on its immediate aftermath, which also could be devastating. Another major problem is that uh, in Istanbul, the emergency assembly and temporary shelter areas where people will gather after the earthquake, uh, they were uh, converted to shopping malls or luxury residences. This mall and this luxurious residential complex were among the spaces designated as post-earthquake temporary shelter areas, but they were turned into a more profitable business model at the expense of a much needed earthquake emergency preparedness area, a pattern too common in this city, experts are warning. Urbanization in Istanbul took a new turn when a new law, commonly known as the Disaster Law, came into force in 2012. The law was put into effect to deal with the restructuring of areas at risk of natural disasters in the country. Uh, it's the law number uh, 6306. So that law granted the government exceptional rights to expropriate land uh, based on the justification of protecting residents against earthquakes and other uh, natural disasters. However, the law has been implemented in a very selective way to seize valuable land in Istanbul. Like Istanbul has the highest land value in all Turkey. So areas under a real earthquake risk uh, do uh, mostly do not match with the areas that are officially so far declared under uh, disaster risk. Uh, by the government. On the other hand, areas uh, in north of Istanbul, areas that has a view of Bosporus, so areas that are expansive, 
areas that are far away from the fault line, so they are less risky in terms of earthquake, they were uh, expo expropriated by the government by imposing the disaster law number 6306. Following the February earthquakes, Istanbul Mayor Ekrem Emamoglu said that 90,000 buildings are at risk of collapse in the city. So the unfortunate thing is that high-risk areas of Istanbul are neglected, ignored, and they were like this law was not used uh, to transform and improve the housing stock in those areas. So which are those areas? The neighborhoods such as Bahçeli Evler, Zeytinburnu, and uh, Avcılar. Also Fatih, the old Istanbul, like the historical peninsula. This is the highest risk area in terms of earthquake. I never heard of any urban transformation project so far for that area. The devastation caused by the recent earthquakes are leading to growing anxiety among Istanbul residents, with many saying earthquake safety and readiness should be on top of the agenda for the government and local authorities in the city biggest mistake that we can do as society, but also as the body politic, is uh, to forget what happened in Kahraman Maraş uh, and, and, and Antakya uh, in that region in a few months and go on as if, you know, nothing had happened. I think this lesson cannot be unlearned. There needs to be a new monitoring mechanism and checks and balances uh, so that uh, buildings cannot be built in violation of the code. This means uh, having a, a much stronger uh, independent uh, monitoring mechanism that would involve civil society, uh, for instance, and much heavier penalties for contractors with regard to Istanbul. As discussed, uh, the government has to come, up, uh, come out uh, with a scheme that would enable uh, private households uh, to self-finance, uh, to some extent, uh, these uh, reconstruction efforts. This uh, could also involve access to, you know, to capital, uh, access to funding uh, for this uh, through Turkish banking system uh, at very discretionary rates. Uh, it can involve uh, new methods, uh, public-private partnerships uh, that would allow for the acceleration of this effort. Another challenge being highlighted by experts relate to the reconstruction efforts in Istanbul, that even if the government is able to fully sponsor rebuilding all vulnerable housing, many won't be able to afford the rent while waiting for a new residence. So average monthly rent in Istanbul is higher than the minimum wage. So even some worker pays all his salary, he even cannot afford uh, monthly rent in Istanbul. So it's kind of a joke. So people who live in these 90,000, 100,000 high risk buildings, uh, for them it is financially impossible to start an urban transformation and urban improvement in their area. So the government should finance the reconstruction costs as well as should provide enough rental aid. And also there is an interesting point which I always emphasize. In Istanbul, there are more than 150,000 new and earthquake resilient buildings constructed after the year of 2008. And these buildings are vacant. So they either belong to the construction companies that are waiting for new customers, or they are the second or third houses of the rich people who do not even bother to rent those houses. The government could, for instance, rent those apartments, convert them to affordable rentals and use them to provide temporary housing. Despite earlier speculation that Turkey's elections will be postponed following the earthquakes, Turkish President Erdogan recently ruled out any delays to the May presidential vote. The economic impact brought forth by the February earthquakes on Turkey, as well as the cost of preparing Istanbul to avoid a similar scenario, will undoubtedly be a major challenge for the winner of the upcoming elections. So we need like a political, economic will, first of all, to convert Istanbul to an earthquake resilient city. We have all the technology, we know the earthquake will take place, we know the location of the fault lines, we know the technology, how to construct earthquake resilient buildings, we know that, so we have to apply all that knowledge.